So let's get to work. I'd like to introduce John DeLisi, who will give us an overview of loss of control in flight in general aviation. John, welcome. Thank you, Chairman Sumwalt, and good morning, everyone. Thanks to all of you who are joining us here today and for those who are watching on the webcast. Today, you're doing something heroic, and I don't say that lightly. We're here today for one purpose and one purpose only, to save lives, and that makes you heroes. Let's talk a little bit about loss of control. Loss of control, being out of control, having the airplane that you're flying not respond to the flight control inputs that you're making. That's got to be the scariest sensation you can imagine as a pilot. It's a helpless feeling, and it's often fatal. In the last 10 years, 978 pilots have lost control of the airplanes they were flying with fatal results. 1,672 people have died. That's enough to fill this conference room six times over. Loss of control is a real problem. There are two things that the pilots of those accident flights had in common. First, not one of them wanted to lose control of their airplane, but they did. And secondly, every one of them, once they lost control, wanted to regain it quickly, but they were unable to. Loss of control is a real problem. Here at the NTSB, we serve as the nation's aviation accident investigators. We're entrusted with the responsibility of going to those accident sites to find out what went wrong. We've seen the bodies. We've talked to the de decimated families. If the things that we talk about today can help prevent any one accident from happening, if they can prevent any one pilot from losing control, or if we can arm any one pilot with the skill to quickly recover from the loss of control, we'll save lives and you'll be heroes. Let me help to try to put this in perspective. Do any of you know Matt Johnson of Creve Corps, Missouri? Matt's 38 years old. He's married to his high school sweetheart, Kelly, and they have two children, Amanda, age six, and Tyler, age three. Matt's a software engineer at a tech firm in St. Louis, and he's a big aviation fan. He earned his private pilot license in his early 20s, and he has about 350 hours in airplanes that he's rented or flown in with, with his buddies. But over the last few years, Matt hasn't flown very much because he's raising his young family and doesn't have much free time. However, in a few years, when the kids are a little bit older, Matt's going to find that he does have some free time, and he's going to have the itch to go flying again. He's going to head out to the local airport in Creve Corps, Missouri, and take some flying lessons with an instructor. His skills are going to come back very quickly, and he's going to gain some confidence. He'll go pass a physical. He'll solo a few times. He'll pass a check ride and he'll become current again. In 2022, Matt's going to get a big promotion at work. After paying off some bills and putting some extra money away for his children's college fund, he's going to start eyeing that blue and white 2006 Cessna 172 Skyhawk that he sees for sale at the local airport. He's going to fly, go up in it a few times and fall in love with it. He's going to have a mechanic check it out. And with Kelly's strong support, he's going to buy his first airplane. Amanda and Tyler are going to be very excited as the family begins to enjoy some trips in the new airplane. Lake of the Ozarks is going to be their favorite destination to enjoy the attractions in Branson, Missouri. On April 24th, 2023, 
exactly five years from today. It's going to be a beautiful Saturday morning in Creve Coeur, Missouri. Matt and the family are going to be planning to go to a local airport for a pancake breakfast fly-in. However, when Tyler wakes up that morning, he's not going to be feeling well. Kelly's going to volunteer to stay home with Tyler, but insist that Matt and Amanda head out for some father-daughter time. It's a short 20-minute flight to St. Charles, Missouri, the municipal airport where the pancake breakfast is being held. But on the downwind leg, Matt's going to be a little tighter than normal. The base leg is going to go by pretty quickly. Not wanting to embarrass himself by going around, Matt's going to give the control wheel a little extra turn, tighten it up just a little bit to try to salvage the approach. As he looks out to see the runway center line, he's going to take his eye off the airspeed indicator for just a second, and he's not going to see the needle dropping. As he looks out and sees the center line, he's going to feel like he's just one little turn away from making the runway when 30 minutes later, the NTSB initial notification will go out. 9.07 a.m., St. Charles, Missouri, Cessna 172 impacted terrain on approach to St. Charles Municipal Airport, 2 POB, fatal. NTSB investigator Mike Folkerts is going to be assigned to the case. He's going to head to Missouri, and when he arrives, he'll be met by representatives from Cessna, Continental Engines, and a FAA inspector from the local FISDO. They'll take a look at the airplane and pretty quickly recognize that there's no sign of pre-impact failure of the airframe or the engine. They'll talk to a number of eyewitnesses, they'll pull some radar data, and they'll begin to have that sinking feeling that this is yet another loss of control accident. Late that afternoon, despite their best advice, Kelly's parents are going to bring her to the accident site, where she is despondent and inconsolable over the loss of her husband and daughter. But this accident doesn't have to happen. I'm sure that the people in this room and watching on the webcast have ideas that can be put in place in the next five years that will change the course of history and prevent this accident from happening. What's it going to be? Will we talk about something that encourages Matt to take two extra hours of slow flight practice with his instructor? in which the instructor will emphasize the importance of keeping your airspeed up while maneuvering to land? Will it be the $850 that Matt will spend when he buys the airplane to install an angle of attack indicator that will light up as he's making the turn and snap him out of it and get him to lower the nose, roll wings level, add power, and do the go around? Or maybe it'll be some technique that we talk about today that will arm Matt with the skill to quickly recover from a slow flight stall. Who knows, but I'm sure that the folks here in this room have the knowledge to change the course of history and prevent this accident. And when you do, you'll prevent lots of other accidents like it. And when you do, you will save lives and when you do, you will be heroes. So thank you again for joining us today, and I look forward to some great conversation. Thank you.